Good evening, everyone. My name is Khaled Abdelal. I'm consultant vascular surgeon in Mediclinic Lain Hospital, UAE. I apologize, I cannot be with you today because I'm outside of the country. However, I want to share with you uh, my experience with the EMA device for endovenous ablation and how do I do it. I wish first to express my gratitude to the ecosystem team to give me this such a wonderful opportunity to share my experience with such eminent participant. I hope you find my presentation useful. And by the end of the presentation, since I'm not present, you can send me any question on my personal mail. I'll be very happy to answer you. So the endovenous microwave ablation for lower limb varicose vein. How do I do it? First of all, before using any technique, you have to understand the technology that lies behind. Because when you understand better, you can expect good results. So the microwave techniques uh, lies on the use of electromagnetic short waves. These short waves are used since long time, but with different frequencies. Every frequency have a different type with different characteristics. For example, the radio wave that you are using every day to listen to the radio lies between uh, zero and one gigahertz. The microwave oven that we use at home lies between one gigahertz and 300 gigahertz. And when the frequency increases more, then we have the infrared waves, the ultraviolet, the X-ray, and the gamma rays. Our device uses 2,450 megahertz frequency, which lies between the microwave range of action. This microwave effect make a kind of friction due to rapid um, mobilization between the positive and negative charges of the water molecules. This friction and vibration makes heat, generate heat. So these electromagnetic waves add energy to the atom or the molecule of the structure by vibration. More the energy equals more vibration and this generates more heat. So energy increase vibration and vibration increase heat. This microwave radi radiation can cause tissue damage. So if you want to know the effect of this ablation on the vein, you have first to know that the first affected are the RBCs, which are completely hemolyzed, which mean, uh, means local thrombotic effect at the level of the heat. And then this heat extends to the wall and the protein inside the wall of the vein, leading a microstructural damage of the protein wall, like the cautery exactly. So the device consists of two components. The first one is the generator component with the Megatron generator inside of it. And the second component is the caster that we use to uh, deliver the energy. This device can be used at several levels like thyroid ablation or some type of treatment of tumors. And finally, for the varicose vein. The system is a low profile system. It uses six French sheets. And after introducing the sheets, you introduce the caster inside the sheets. This caster measures 1.2 meter in length. At the last one centimeter, you have the active microwave tip that delivers the energy. And if you examine the caster, that you will have marks, circumference, circumferential marks every one centimeter to indicate to you that you have ablated this centimeter and then this one and this is this, this one. So this marks to indicate you that you how to move in equal way. And then you will find three marks here at three centimeter from the end, which indicates the end of the ablation. When you find these three marks, that means that you, you, you reach the end of the caster and you have to go out. And you have later on, there is five marks here and five marks there. It's point B, it's about 13 centimeter from the caster, which represents the length of the sheath. So I'll show you later on on the on the case how I do it, that how to retrieve the sheath at the level of the 13 centimeters. So the caster is marked by one centimeter marks, one centimeter tip, which is the delivery of the system. At three centimeters, there is a first marker, which indicate the end of the sheath. And at 13 centimeters, there is special markers that indicated that the sheath has to be retrieved. So why do I like Emma? I like Emma because it is simple in use. It is a one device containing the tumescent injector and the microwave generator. You don't have so much material to installation or to lose time to install and to connect. It's only one device that makes both. It is easy to operate. There is no, no need for eye protection as you use in laser. It has the same efficacy as radio frequency and laser ablation, and it, it produces the same efficacy with less heat. 
for me, it's very important this last heat because as you know already, uh, the laser therapy needs 700 degrees of heat production in order to be effective. And for the radio frequency, it's about 120 degrees. And then with the microwave, it's more or less than this is between 70 to 100 degrees. So it has the same efficacy, but with less heat production. And finally, it's one, one of the most important features for me that it can be verified easily as I have modified the special technique proper to my uh, practice. And will be, I will be very happy to share with you that I can verify actively if my ablation was effective or not. So let's expose our first case. This is the case I did the last week. It's 45 years old female complaining of pain, discomfort, heaviness of the left lower limb. This uh, patient has dilated varicose vein on inspection and on clinical examination, you can find this dilated vein at the level of the leg, more below the knee level with swollen ankle. And when you palpate the left saphenofemoral junction, you will feel the thrill coming on valsalva maneuver due to the reflux at the level of saphenofemoral junction. So as usual, you have to do the investigation by the venous Doppler, which uh, confirmed the incontinence of the saphenofemoral junction. And the most important things indicate the size of the vein, which was seven centimeter, and the reflex time, which was four seconds. So the steps of the procedure are as follows. I recommend every one of you to respect, absolutely respect these steps if you want to have good result and if, if you do not want to have uh, complications. First of all, we have to verify by ultrasound the patency of the femoral vein, the patency of the great saphenous vein, and the location of the saphenous femoral junction. It happens through my long experience. I'm doing endovascular ablation since more than 15 years now, and with microwave for the last year, that we can find during this verification that you find that some, pa some patients has developed a kind of lipitis during the waiting time between you decide to do the surgery and you find a place and you operate the patient. Um, in my practice, I have sometimes waiting list up to one month and I have discovered some patient developed complication during this period, a small complication maybe, but for example, if the segment below the knee developed phlebitis, you cannot use this segment in order to introduce your sheath. So if you do not verify, you will not be able to introduce your sheath and introduce your catheter. Some cases also shows some complication by a faulty results by ultrasound. I have seen also some cases with um, double vein, double great saphenous vein, or sometimes a severely dilated anterior, anterior branch of the thigh at the level of saphenofemoral junction beside the great saphenous vein. So imagine if you treat one vein that you think the great saphenous and you leave the other one, your vein that you treated will be successfully ablated, but the patient may develop symptoms again. And he may go to the ultrasound and he will find a vein that for him it will be the great saphenous vein because he cannot see the vein that you have ablated. So you will be in bad position and try to explain the patient how come that you have missed this and how come you did ablation and you said it is successful and you still have a patent vein. So it's very important to verify before you start the femoral vein, the femoral junction, the location of the femoral junction and the patency of the great saphenous vein. Then you have to do the puncture just below the knee, about five, seven centimeter below the knee under echo guidance. You follow the great saphenous vein to this level and I'll show you how, and then you puncture directly under vision. For anyone who has the skills for endovascular techniques, you will have no problem at all to puncture as you see the needle perfectly, you, need the, you see the wall and you puncture and you introduce your sheath very safely. Once the sheath is introduced, you have to introduce the caster inside the sheath and you place it at seven femoral junction and then you retrieve it two centimeter. You have to respect this two centimeter from the seven femoral junction and I'll show you how, uh, why later on. Finally, the caster in place, you have to start the two missions using fluid. Usually it is normal saline. Some people add xylocaine. 1% or 2% according to their personal experience. Some people add sodium bicarbonate, some people add xycholine, xylocaine and sodium bicarbonate. I have personally used all. That means I use sometimes saline alone, sometimes saline with xylocaine, sometimes saline with sodium bicarb, but I didn't notice any difference between any of them. So I cannot recommend to you which one to use. The most important that you use saline in order to create the distance between the vein and the skin and avoid the propagation of the heat to the inner layer of the skin. And for xylocaine and sodium bicarbonate, I personally 
did not notice any difference. So you inject them or you add them or you do not, it depends on your wish, but uh, there is no scientific background uh, telling you exactly which is the proper uh, use for this solution. Uh, once you did the tumescence, you have to go back again to sufferin femoral junction and make a final verification of the positioning of the tip. You have to respect again the two centimeter below the sufferin femoral junction. Some uh, surgeons, very famous names, I have met friends of mine and I explained and we discussed. Some of them do not respect these two centimeter and they make the ablation at the sufferin femoral junction. I'll explain to you what my opinion on the case. But I really recommend that if you respect the recommendation of the product of the, of the, um, of the uh, device, that they all for the laser, for the radio frequency, for the microwave, that you have to respect the two centimeter to avoid the propagation of the heat to the wall of the femoral vein. Uh, I personally do compression of the cephalon femoral junction during the delivery of the microwave. Why? In order to assure that the heat is expanded to the whole walls all around. And secondly, to continue ablation for two, three centimeter, making sure that blood is clotted inside and the vein is completely cauterized from inside and avoiding the, the possibility of migration to the uh, pulmonary uh, artery or producing pulmonary embolism. Once the procedure finished, you have to use ultrasound again to verify your patency and show you how. And finally, I use compressive dressing using bandage. I keep the patient under observation for a few hours till the uh, disappearance of effect of anesthesia and complete recovery. Then he goes home walking on his legs same days and another patient visit after seven days. So for this um, ultrasound, you see this is the segment of the great saphenous vein below the knee. You have to verify that the size of the vein will adapt to your six French sheaths. So you try to have the best image, you fix it so that you can enter using the needle in transfixing the wall of the vein and to use the wire inside and through the wire introduce your sheets. The selection of this segment is very important in order to have a safe introduction of your sheets. Then the caster goes inside. You have the femoral junction here. This is a great saphenous vein, and here's saphenous femoral junction. You introduce your caster, and you find your way up to the level of the saphenous femoral junction, and then you retrieve it two centimeters below. Sometimes you have to measure these two centimeters, or you don't see them well, especially if the patient is obese. So in the ultrasound machine, usually you have a measurement uh, tool that you can use two centimeter and be sure that you respected the recommendation. But if you do not have these two centimeter, it's very simple. You, you put your caster tip at the level of saphenous femoral junction. And since your caster is graduated, each mark is one centimeter, you can retrieve your caster or two marks. So you are sure that you have retrieved successfully two centimeters. This is the caster and this is the needle you introduce under echo and then you inject your saline to make the tumescence. You see how far the vein goes. The vein was first at this level and you see it went down about five centimeters. The aim of the tumescence you see is to push the vein downwards to make it as far as possible from the inner surface of the skin uh, to avoid the damage of the skin by the uh, produced heat inside the vein. At the seven of femoral junction here, we respect the two centimeter and you see the caster here. I do the compression, that's why the vein is compressed. And when you start to deliver the heat, you see the effect, there is the coagulation site here. And if you are not satisfied, you can go two or even three uh, stimulation. Each stimulation is about six seconds. And then you retrieve for one centimeter again and you deliver heat again, and if it is not satisfied, you are not satisfied, you can deliver once again. That means the heat release may be used efficient, uh, efficiently by um, complete occlusion of the vein, but sometimes occlusion is not enough, so do not hesitate to push the pedal again and have a supplementary six millimeter of delivery of heat. Then I personally prefer to ablate three centimeters before releasing the compression and the level of separate from junction. Can you imagine here, this is a one centimeter tip. When you deliver the heat, it makes coagulation here. And then there is 
some small blood clots due to the hemolysis of the vein. If you remove the compression, theoretically, some of these clots may migrate with the flow, especially when there is the, uh, the lateral branch here of the side. It may migrate with the flow. So for me, in order to have an extra security, I complete the compression, I do not re remove it, and I make an extension to second and the third centimeter, and I extend the ablation up to three centimeter to stabilize this area and to trap the possible thrombosed uh, RBCs inside. And finally, once you deliver and you see the vein is completely destructed here, I go a little bit up and see that you, the two centimeters you see is started to be reduced because the heat continued to propagate at the level of the saponate hemorrhage. So once again, in order to retrieve the energy, there is marker here, every marker is one centimeter. You see, you deliver six seconds and then you apply again another heat. When you find these marks, this indicates that you arrive at the, the uh, distance of 13 centimeter and you have to re retrieve the sheath. So you fix with the right hand the caster, you retrieve the sheath with the left hand, then you fix the caster again, and you continue delivering your heat centimeter by centimeter. This is a very important technique, and these marks it's, are very important, especially if you know exactly where they lie, so you are sure and you expect um, when to remove them and how safe you remove them. Here you see, you remove, you find the marks, for the 13 centimeter, you deliver your, uh, your heat, you retrieve the sheath, and then you continue delivery as usual. So verification for successful ablation, how you do it? First of all, you know, this ablation may be complete, may be not complete. So how can I do it? This is how you retrieve the caster, one centimeter by one centimeter. And from time to time, you have to push again, you see, if the ablation was complete, it will not go inside. But since it is still open, if the, the caster succeeded to pass through the areas that you have ablated. If you do not do this pushing test, as I uh, pronounce it, this pushing test will allow you to detect if there is remaining area of unsuccessful ablation so you can provide heat again and be sure that ablation was complete. So you see, when you do the ablation every three, four centimeters, you push again. If it goes inside, that means it's not enough and you have to repeat. So how it looks like when the ablation is successful? When it is successful, it's like this. You see, you push, it does not go one centimeter, one millimeter inside. This indicates that the vein is completely occluded. And finally, when you find to the end point, this is five centimeter, you know there is markers here at three centimeters. So you do the ablation at four centimeter, and you know at one centimeter there will be the marker. You retrieve, there is a marker three, you give your final delivery for the heat, and you know after that at two centimeter, you have the tip and you have to stop. So you remove all outside, and this is the end result. There is no bleeding and everything is fine. And this is the final result with the end uh, exit point. Finally, before you leave, you have to verify your results. You see the vein is completely ablated here. And you see the two centimeter, they disappear. Why? Because the heat that we, uh, that we delivered at two centimeter is extended below the wall and till arrive to the wall of the femoral vein. Imagine if you did the delivery at the level of the junction directly. This extension of the heat may be to the wall of the femoral vein causing damage microthrombi that may migrate easily to the iliac or the pulmonary vein. So uh, pulmonary artery. So this is the artery pulsating. This is the vein is completely patent. And this is a great saphenous vein completely ablated with successful result. I hope this technique will help you to have good results and, uh, and it will encourage you to use this system. For me, it's a very safe system and very effective. And uh, for any question, please uh, send me to my private mail. I'll be very happy to answer you uh, with my own experience. Thank you again. And I apologize once again for not being with you. And I wish you a very successful workshop. Thank you and uh, have a nice day.